the military just want to run with its own story. The army and nothing matters. It's what it says that must be followed. Today, we bring you more insight about the gripping and controversial story that has sent shockwaves across Nigeria. The Okwama killings, that has everyone talking. Meet Clement Ikolo, the traditional ruler of EWU Kingdom in Ugeli South local government area of Delta State. A man caught in the crossfire of power, loyalty, and justice. Last Thursday, King Ikolo voluntarily surrendered himself to the police in Asaba after being declared wanted by the Nigerian military. But what followed was a twist that left us all questioning the system. The Delta State Police Command, through its spokesperson, SP Bright Idafi, confirmed the shocking development. Instead of conducting a thorough investigation, the police handed over the embattled monarch to the military authority. Yes, you heard that right. Why? Because King Akolo's name appeared on the military's wanted list. Allegedly, he was linked to the recent killing of 17 soldiers in the Okwama community. King Ikolo wasn't alone. Alongside him, other prominent figures who spoke out about what happened in Okwama faced the same fate. And what did King Ikolo have to say? In disbelief, he declared, I have no hand in the killings. It is against my philosophy as a human being and my faith as a Catholic. He emphasized that the state government was aware of his struggles within the kingdom. But the burning question remains, why target those who dare to speak out, those who revealed the raw truth about Okwama? Is this justice or a dangerous game of power? The uh, news that came out this morning to say I'm wanted, I'm on my way to the police to declare my innocence to the police. I know nothing about this heinous crime. Uh, I'm the traditional ruler, yes, I'm the traditional ruler of a vulnerable kingdom. However, I know nothing about it, and uh, I'm going to the police to turn myself in. The OVA, the traditional ruler we're talking about, is not the traditional ruler of Okoma kingdom. The robot nation is organized along kingdoms, and altogether we have 24 kingdoms of which the OVA we're talking about now, Ogeneruke, is just one king of the 24 kingdoms, which is Ewu Kingdom. And the Ewu Kingdom has a headquarters. The headquarters of Ewu Kingdom is Ewu Town. The Okoma we are talking is like a satellite settlement within the uh, Ewu Kingdom. And the distance between where the king is even resided and where the crime allegedly happened is a distance. In fact, it is a riverine community of Ewu Kingdom. Ewu Kingdom largely is an upland area, but with some riverine communities. And so Okoma is one of those riverine communities. The man you are linking with this crime now is a man that relocated from London to just take the throne. And he is far away physically from the scene of crime. That is just, the, his only connection is that he happens to be the traditional ruler of a kingdom of which Okoma is a community or a, 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 a satellite uh, village. Other than that, there is no other thing that connects him. But what we are saying is that uh, there may just be an explanation. What matters is an investigation. Let this crime be investigated. If proper investigation is done, and then the king or whoever is found to be an ancestry before or after the fact of the crime, then so be it. But none of this has been done, and we keep on. In the first, does the army, does the army defense headquarter, is it part of their duty to make declaration of wanted persons? On what basis? that investigation has been done, then those people are found to be culpable in one way or the other. And if that declaration, should be, how is it done usually? Is it not through the police or some other agencies that uh, has a function to do that? But the military is all to itself, doing everything, and then we are just there as if we are not in a democratic setting. The once serene coastal community of Okwama now stands engulfed by chaos and flames. Fear has driven many residents to flee their homes. 
seeking safety in nearby Ugeli. Why? Because the Nigerian military has descended upon Okwama, intensifying their manhunt for the culprits behind the killing of the 17 soldiers, including senior officers. Soldiers in their quest for justice have set some houses ablaze. The air hangs heavy with tension as families abandon their belongings, desperate to escape the wrath of the military. Human Rights and Peace Crusaders, HRPC, also known as the Citizens Rights Concern Enhancement Initiative, CRCEI, has raised concerns over the military's occupation of Okwama. They urgently call for the immediate withdrawal of soldiers from the community. Their plea? To enable aid and assistance to reach the needy population. Women and children find themselves stranded in the forest, running for their lives. The situation is dire and the community's vulnerability is palpable. Traditional rulers have been cautioned against shielding suspects involved in the killings of soldiers in Okuwama. But beyond immediate relief, we must address the root causes. Why does this cycle of violence persist? Nigeria, a state but not truly a nation, grapples with fragile statehood. Our military and police lack the reverence they receive elsewhere. And sometimes their actions have fueled resentment. For instance, extreme overreactions, like the infamous Odi incident in Bielsa State, 1999, and Zaki Bayam in Benua State, 2001, have strained military-civilian relations. We need thoughtful solutions, not just condemnations. The world is watching. The Okwama killings have drawn attention beyond our borders. United Nations, UN. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights has expressed concern over the escalating violence in Okwama. They've called for an impartial investigation into the events and urged all parties to respect human rights and due process. African Union, AU, has convened an emergency session to discuss the crisis. AU leaders are pushing for dialogue and a peaceful resolution. They emphasize the need to protect civilians and uphold the rule of law. Ikawas, Economic Community of West African States, has issued a statement condemning the loss of lives and displacement of civilians. Ikawas leaders are urging Nigeria to address the root causes of the conflict and prevent further bloodshed. Beyond official channels, Nigerians in the diaspora are rallying. Protests outside Nigerian embassies in London, New York, and Johannesburg demand justice for Okwama victims. The hashtag Okwama crisis is trending globally. Ghana, our West African neighbor, has expressed deep concern over the loss of lives in Okwama. President Nana akufo Addo called for restraint and urged dialogue between the feuding communities. Ghanaian citizens have also organized peaceful demonstrations outside the Nigerian High Commission in Accra, demanding justice and peace. The Beninese government has dispatched a diplomatic team to mediate between Okwama and Okoloba. Their goal? To prevent further escalation and find a peaceful resolution. Benin's foreign minister emphasized the need for dialogue and respect for human rights. In Yaoundé, the capital, Cameroonian officials have convened an emergency meeting with Nigerian counterparts. They discussed regional security implications and the impact on cross-border relations. Cameroon's President Paul Biya called for restraint and emphasize the importance of maintaining peace along our shared border. 